Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to SBR revision series for September 2021 and today we are going to cover IS 16 a very 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 important topic for your SBR so in IS 16 we are going to cover three things initial recognition subsequent measurement and revaluation of non current asset so initially you recognize property plan agreement at cost okay there is no choice initially at cost only but for subsequent measurement you have a choice either you can measure it at cost or you can measure it at fair value but if you are measuring at cost how do you calculate that cost so the subsequent expenditure on non-current asset may be capitalized so whatever is capitalized you take it as a cost of a plant if, if it it's capitalized if it has this three things Enhances the economic benefits. It should be an expense which enhances the economic benefits of the asset. Example adding a new wing to a building. If you are adding a new wing to a building, right, it enhances the benefit of that asset. People can take benefit from that building having a new wing. So, this cost you can capitalize, it will be taken as a cost of non current asset. Second, replaces part of an asset that has been separately depreciated. When you are replacing an asset, okay, you are replacing an asset with another asset, but part of an asset, not the not the full asset, part of an asset that has been separately depreciated and has been fully depreciated. Example: furnace that requires new linings. So it could be. A part of an asset that has been separately depreciated or fully depreciated. Either way, you can capitalize the cost. And the third one is it replaces economic benefits previously consumed. For example, major inspection of aircraft. So, if you are doing any major inspection for the aircraft, you can capitalize this cost. Now, asset needs to be depreciated. Right, whenever you are having any asset, whether it is intangible asset, you amortize it. No, non current asset, tangible asset, you have to look for depreciation. So, asset is depreciated over its useful economic life. Okay, remember depreciation method and useful life of the asset. This two things should be reviewed at the end of each year because depreciation method also can change, useful life also can change. Yesterday, when we studied IS uh, 8. Changes in accounting, estimates, policies, and error. So, changes in depreciation method is what? It is a change in accounting estimate. Right? You can change an accounting estimate. That's why every year you have to review whether it changes or not. Also, the useful life. And if an asset has paths with different lives, sometimes it's possible that one asset has different paths to that with different lives. Example a building with a flat roof. Building will have different life, flat roof will have a different lifetime. How do you depreciate in that case? So the component part of the asset should be depreciated separately. That means you depreciate it separately, not as one single asset. Building will be depreciated separately because they have different useful life. Flat roof will be depreciated because they have a different useful life separately. Okay, and this question, I don't remember the question number, but it came in your revision kit. Right, it came in the past paper that means where we had to depreciate separately the component part and all needs to be depreciated separately because they were having different useful life. I think it was some 10 years or 30 years, something relating to some vessel or something, right? But I have done that question, is there on my playlist? You can go and check in the SBR revision uh, kit solutions. So that's it for the cost part. Now we are moving on to the second method. Right, this is we are talking about the subsequent measurement. Subsequently, you can measure non current asset at cost or fair value. So that means revaluation. You have to revalue. Revaluation model. So, when you are taking revaluation model as a measurement basis for your property plan and equipment, you need to look at these things. One, revaluation is optional. Under IS 16, you are not forced to select revaluation. Remember, some standard have that option they give you the option to measure some policy some standard no option 
you have to measure at cost means you have to measure at cost. You have to measure at fair value means you have to measure at fair value. But IS 16 gives you an option. But not initial, okay, subsequent measurement I'm talking about. Cost versus revaluation model. That's why it's optional. But if one asset is revalued, all assets in that class must be revalued. Right? In the same class, if you are revaluing one asset, you cannot leave, you cannot use cost for the other asset. No. If one asset you are replacing in that class, all the asset has to be revalued. Because for the comparison purpose, it becomes very hard, right? To compare the same class if one you are having revalued model, the other one you are measuring using cost model. That's why in order to avoid that comparability problem, they don't measure using revaluation model. Hence, fair value model, okay? Second, revaluation gain. Where does revaluation gain and loss, losses goes? This is very important. This only you have to see in every standard. Whether it is IS 19, whether it is IS 16, whether it is IS 38, whether it is IS 40, whether it is IFRS 9, where does this revaluation gain and losses goes? Because for every standard it's different. Don't think revaluation gain and losses always goes to uh, other comprehensive income, OCI only, no. It can go to profit and loss account also. But IS 16 says revaluation gain goes to OCI, other comprehensive income, unless there's a condition now. Unless the gain re reverses a previous revaluation loss on the same asset previously recognized in profit and loss. That means you were having a revaluation loss. Revaluation losses are recognized where? Profit and loss account. Yes, revaluation losses are recognized in profit and loss account. Only revaluation gains are recognized under the competency income. This you should know. We are coming to that next. Where will revaluation loss go? But if it reverses the revaluation loss, then you have to recognize revaluation gain in the profit and loss account only. Normal condition under normal condition of the comprehensive income. But if the scenario, your question, they tell you that this gain is reversing a previous revaluation loss that was recognized in the profit and loss account. That means the gain is now turning to profit now the gain is becoming sorry the loss is becoming gain previously it was a loss now because of this revaluation gain it's becoming a gain it's possible right let's say previous year your revaluation loss was 400 this year you're having a gain of 500 so minus 400 plus 500 so gain is more so this year you'll be having 100 gain so that gain will be recorded in profit and loss account that's what the second point is talking about when it reverses the previous loss that loss is converted to gain now because of this revaluation gain that gain is recognized in profit and loss account only otherwise gains are rec recognized in other comprehensive income it is credited third revaluation losses are charged to profit and loss account okay here is also a condition here also revaluation losses can go to other comprehensive income the same way revaluation can uh, gain can go to profit and loss Revaluation loss also can go to other comprehensive income unless the loss relates to previous revaluation surplus, in which case it should be charged for the comprehensive income. What does it mean? What does it mean? Previously, there was a revaluation surplus. It happens, no, not, not every uh, uh, you will be having a revaluation surplus. Sometimes it will be a loss also because the value of the asset can go up and down. Some year you will be having loss, some year you will be having gain. So, previous year you were having a loss sorry you were having a surplus now you are having a loss so because of this year's loss your gain is reducing so gain you have recognized in other comprehensive income this year's loss also will go to other comprehensive income because it is related to that gain same asset that gain only you understanding same asset it was a loss before sorry it was a gain before so you recognize it under other comprehensive income. Now you're having a loss. So that loss will go under other comprehensive income. Hence, it will reduce the income under other comprehensive income. But losses, you will not separate, uh, separately recognize under profit and loss account for that gain that was recognized in other comprehensive income. I hope you are able to understand, you know. But otherwise, if revaluation loss, this is a new, fresh new revaluation loss, not... Uh, it is not related to any revaluation surplus or anything. Previously, there was no revaluation surplus or anything like that. Then it will go to profit and loss account normally. 
and entity has this choice that they can transfer the excess depreciation from revaluation what happens when uh, your asset is revalued the value of ca the carrying amount of asset goes up so because of that depreciation also will be higher now because depreciation will be charged on that higher amount now right so that excess depreciation you can transfer from revaluation reserve to retained earnings that option is there why re revaluation reserve to retained earnings see that excess depreciation is because of revaluation right so it it can be under revaluation reserve now you have that option that you can transfer it to retained earnings because retained earnings deals with all the expenses and all which is there in your profit and loss account so depreciation is also an expense so you can keep it in revaluation reserve or you can transfer to retained earnings it's a choice not compulsorily that you have to transfer okay wherever choices are there you have to understand that also you have to write in your answer whether it's a choice or whether you have to transfer because when you're writing your answers like this explaining and if you go and write they have to transfer to retain earnings then your answer is wrong wherever choice is there you have to mention that word choice so that's it for is 16 you have to remember that's it initially cost subsequent measurement cost or revaluation model cost you should know how to calculate the cost what are the things that can be capitalized and revaluation model you have to take uh, care of two things if it's a gain how will it be treated if it's a loss how it will be treated that's it so that's it for is 16 tomorrow we'll be covering the next video we'll be covering is 19 employee benefits thanks for watching and see you in the next video